Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School Mass. On this day, we particularly revere the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. How can it be that our... How can it be that our God makes himself our food and drink? It would appear that he and he alone knows how hungry and thirsty we really are. The sacred scriptures make it clear how important food and drink are. From the very beginning, we consider food as a temptation and also as a remedy. We are thankful that our God sees fit to feed us personally. Please stand and greet our celebrant, Father Louis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Amen. Good morning, St. Philip Mary School. Oh, you guys sound like you're still sleeping. Good morning, St. Philip Mary School. Good morning, Father Good. This is the last Sunday Mass I have with you all and the last Sunday Mass of the school. And so it's a blessing to end our Sunday school Masses with the solemnity of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Eucharist, and how we can try to make the Eucharist the center of our lives. And sometimes we don't make the Eucharist the center of our lives. We make ourselves or other people the center of our lives, and we fall into temptation and we do sins. And so my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen.
today's best, we pray for Ines Suarez on her birthday, for Luis and Melina Rivera on their wedding anniversary, and for Tarana Repose of the Souls of Minnie Sosa, Ramon Basulto Ruiz, Alfredo Espinosa, and Alex Landeros. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with, the, with God the Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought you forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? 
because a loaf of bread is one. We, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I think we have the sequence today? Okay. No sequence? Okay. Please stand. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled amongst themselves, saying, How could this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father has sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. This is probably one of my favorite solemnities to celebrate it's the Eucharist. It took me a long time to understand, well, I'm still under trying to understand the Eucharist, right? Because when I was young, no one ever really taught me what the Eucharist meant. You know, I thought it was just a piece of bread that we could toss around, right? Thank God I never did that. But, you know, it's just, I, I don't, no one ever taught. Went to the First Communion, no one really, I don't remember anything about the Eucharist being body and blood, soul, divinity of Christ. Confirmation, forget it right? Nothing. So my parents, nothing. Just went to Mass on Sundays and received communion. And that was it. That's all we did. That, 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 that was my understanding of the Eucharist. It wasn't until I was in college and I met good Catholics who started talking to me about the Eucharist. And I doubted them. I was like, what do you mean? There can't be really Jesus' body and blood in there. Look, it's a piece of bread, some wine, Right? Until they, they pointed me to today's gospel. This gospel, I invite you to go home and read John chapter 6. Right? Read the whole thing. It's really where we get the teaching of the Eucharist. Because Jesus is very poignant in this. He's not saying the Eucharist is a symbol. How many times did he repeat? If you eat my flesh and drink my blood. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood. He's trying to drive home a point to the Jewish people, to his followers. Saying, if you want to live forever, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. But they're thinking of it like cannibalism, right? And at this moment, this, after this part of the gospel, many of his followers abandoned him. They said, I can't. I can't understand. This, is, this guy is crazy. 
Why am I going to continue following this guy who's teaching us cannibalism? Right? They lost their faith. They walked away. But if we follow Jesus in his life, we get to Holy Thursday, night of the Last Supper, where he takes bread. And you'll hear me say these words in a little bit. Breaks it. Gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. Takes a cup filled with fruit of the vine. Take and drink. So instead of persevering with Jesus and reflecting, fighting with that reality, I have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. They abandoned him because they couldn't understand. Right? I wish the gospel went longer. It's just a little bit longer that you get to that point. And many have abandoned him. And he turns to Jesus. Jesus turns to St. Peter. Are you too going to leave me? He said, Master, you have the words of eternal life. Right? That's what St. Peter tells Jesus. You have the words of eternal life. Why are we going to abandon you? Right? We'll fight. We'll try to figure this out. But you have the words of eternal life. What you say is true. Jesus ain't going to lie. So what does that mean for us? What does it mean for us? Where is the Eucharist in our life? Where, do you, where is the Eucharist in my life? Right? Is the Eucharist the center of my life? Right? Before my reconversion back to the church, before I began to take my faith seriously, who was at the center of life? Me. It was me. Right? That's, that's, who, that's all who I cared about. That showed in the way that I gave gifts to my parents, to my siblings. This is, it showed in how I treat other people. It was all about me. When I went shopping, I shopped for myself first and then everyone else. And of course, I went to the more expensive places for me. Then I went to Ross for my family, right? I was pretty sad. My mom gets so mad. It's like, what is this? Sorry. You know, but that was me, right? That's what the world was telling me, right? Because I didn't want to be living for Christ. I didn't, know, I didn't know who he was. I thought he was a God that's far away, gone. Right? He's abandoned us here in this world. So I was living for the world. It was me. It's all about me, 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 me. And it was all very materialistic. Until I understand, I began to learn about the Eucharist. Until I started going to daily Mass at 6.30 in the morning before I went to work. Then I realized I need to take me out of the equation and put Christ in the center. Slowly but surely, Especially as I began to do this, I began to encounter friends to help me understand not just the Eucharist, but Jesus, who Jesus is in my life, right? So we had that opportunity to reflect on that, my brothers and sisters, especially as we go into the summer months, the vacation months, right? For our school parents who are, who are here to see, okay, what can you do? You know, you're not taking a break from your faith. Hopefully you're not taking a break from your faith, right? Hopefully you can find ways to continue to grow in faith, to have fun, obviously, to have fun with your family. But to grow in that faith, to put the Eucharist in the center of your family, right? Some of you, this may not be your parish, right? You might just have, you send your children here to school. This is great. You know, whatever parish that you go to, you know, find ways to put that Eucharist in the center, right? Because that's what Jesus tells us. Now, one thing I do want to preach about on this, this, um, Solemnity is really what's talking about in the second reading to St. Paul. What does he tell us? The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one. We, though many, are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. So the loaf he's talking about is the Eucharist, right? Here's the beautiful thing about our faith. Yes, we might have diverse masses in the different languages throughout the world. We might have different times for masses, different lengths, whatever. But there's one thing that is the same in every single mass that we celebrate. And that's the Eucharist. So I take comfort in this. That we're all united in the Eucharist. Because as I'm here celebrating this mass, my parents are in Vegas going to their parish to go to mass. And whenever I'm at mass and they're at mass... I'm connected to them because of the one Eucharist that we all share in every single Catholic church, retreat center, wherever. It's the same Eucharist. Might taste a little bit different, but the consecration that the priest 
or the bishop says over the bread and wine causes that piece of bread, that wine, to be united to every single Catholic church throughout the whole world. So if you have family members in different countries, Mexico, Guatemala, Salvador, the Philippines, whenever you come to Mass and your family members are at Mass, they're united to you in the Eucharist. And so the Eucharist isn't just, you know, yes, for salvation, of course, that, that's given, but it's to unite us. So if the Eucharist is at the center of our family, of our life, we're united. We're whole. So when the ugly forces of this world try to divide us, try to destroy us, try to tempt us, we take comfort and receive protection from the Eucharist in the center so that we can say no to these things that divide us and say yes to Christ. And I think that's so, that's so important, my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, if I didn't discover the Eucharist, in my college years, I don't know where I would be in my life. If I didn't encounter good Catholic friends in my university days, I have no idea where, I would not be here as a priest, I could tell you that much, right? Like I said, when I was in high school, I hated being Catholic, hated it. I lied to my mom so I could stay home and watch cartoons on Sundays, that was my life, right? And I don't know, well, there are many things that caused me to go to church on Sunday when I moved out for, the, for, for college. But I don't know where I would be without the Eucharist. And that's why I encourage so many couples to get married in the church. I'm like, get married in the church. Jesus tells us that we eat, if we don't eat his flesh, if we don't eat, drink his blood, we do not have eternal life. If you want to save your family, if you want to save yourself, receive the Eucharist. Body, blood, soul, divinity. Now, I know right now we're not giving the cup, right? A lot of people are thinking, well, Father, you're preventing us from drinking his blood. Okay, with Jesus, we have to understand, we cannot separate his body, blood, soul, and divinity. So, in the host, little host, is body, blood, soul, and divinity. We can't separate that. So when we receive the host and only the host, we are receiving body, blood. So we're, com we're fulfilling what Jesus says. Eat his flesh, drink his blood in just a host, right? So when we receive communion, we're actually receiving communion twice, right? The bread and the cup, right? We're actually receiving communion twice in one mass because in the cup also, in the wine, it says body, blood, soul, and divinity. We cannot separate that. Right? Jesus separates it for us in the image of the piece of bread and the wine because we're human beings. Right? He knows it for us. We can see it. Oh, body, blood. You know, we're human beings. He knows us. He knows us well. He knows us what we can understand. And so he separates it for us. But in reality, inside that substance of Jesus, after the consecration, it's totally him. Completely, totally him. And that's what we have to eat his flesh. And in the Greek, they use the word sarx, which means to chew. So people say spiritual communion is powerful. Yes, but receiving communion is much more powerful because it's part of Jesus' commandment to eat, to chew on his flesh. So it's okay to chew on the Eucharist. <laughs> Jesus says, right? It's okay to chew on the Eucharist. I have to chew the Eucharist, so you'll hear me. Crunch, 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 right? Because, because I have to talk. I'm not going to have Jesus chill it on my tongue as I'm trying to give communion, right? No, we have to, I have to chew. So it's okay to chew. Okay, so what can we do? What can we do about the solemnity? Take time during this week, my brothers and sisters, to reflect on your devotion to the Eucharist. You know, where is the Eucharist in your life? Is it in the center or is it that something that I receive when I go to Mass? Okay, and so take time to reflect on that. Who Jesus is in your life. Who the Eucharist is in your life. And to allow the Eucharist to transform us. Amen? Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death that was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The various hungers of the people of the world have innumerable objects. We learn that all our hungers help us discover the ultimate hunger for meaning. Jesus, the bread of life, is the meaning of life. We long for his fulfillment in us. That all of us and the people of God will encourage one another in deepening our hunger for the body and blood of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations and people of the world will, through the works of justice, assure sufficient food for all. That no one will be without dignified sustenance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are pining for meaning to fill their life will be granted. Through caring friends, a sense of direction toward God, the God who became human, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families will recognize how precious their shared life is, as children are given what is needed for the bodies and their souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those whose medical conditions make eating and drinking difficult, that they will be given the means to nourish themselves properly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the resurrection of all who have died, especially for those who have died recently and for all those whose anniversaries occur at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for Ines Suarez on her birthday and for Luisa and Melina Rivera on their wedding anniversary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for the eternal repose of the souls of Minnie Sosa, Ramon Basulto Ruiz, Alfredo Espinosa, and Alex Landeros. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our In a moment of silence, let us present our, present our own needs and petitions to our loving God. For all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, today we celebrate your sacramental presence as we contemplate the mystery of your sacrifice and the elements by which you give us food and drink for eternity. As we are fed, so may we feed others. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And just a quick announcement. We do have a second collection today. And our second collection will help our retired priests in our archdiocese and so we'll do the second collection after communion today thank you for your generosity in advance
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving things that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and Mark, our regional Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Sears command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom. power, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, guys. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For our brothers and sisters at home, let us make an act of spiritual communion. O my Jesus, you believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you to my soul. Since I cannot receive you now sacramentally, please come spiritually to my heart. I embrace the Lord as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Please do not allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Corpus Christi, Casabi Vita Paterna. Sanguis Christi, Casabi Vita Paterna.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in, this, in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Now, this time we're going to take up our second collection to help our retired priest. And so I invite our ushers to come forward. And this is to help our retired priests who, you know, have served Archdiocese for 60, 70 years. They've ordered their life and now they're retired, maybe infirm, they may be in a convalescent home. And so they still need our support. And so this, this fund will specifically go to help them. So I'll let the, the baskets pass and then I'll continue with my announcements. Thank you for your generosity. Someday I'll, I'll take advantage of this fund. But that's going to be like 40 years down the road. <laughs> Hopefully 40 years down the road. Hopefully I live for 40 more years. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's wear our... So continuing announcements. The school is hosting a, a food sale after Mass. I think you know where you'll find me after Mass. <laughs> so they, they have pozole, tamales... Pastries, hot Cheetos, nachos, all the stuff that I should not be eating and stuff. So come by, support the school. They're, they're right here. The, the, the pozole is inside the hall. So they're in the kitchen there. So I think there's a little spot there to pay, get your tickets, and then you go go get your food. Okay. And so come and help the school out and um, help our fundraiser out. And so they'll be selling food after mass. Like I said, you know where to find me after mass. Also, we need altar servers for our masses, not just this mass, but our other masses. Um, if you, parents, if you're interested in having your child be an altar server, we have a meeting in our parish hall at 2.30, or basically after the 1.30 mass today. So come and attend that meeting if your son or daughter can be an altar server. We need more altar servers for our, um, our masses on Sundays, okay? Our Father's Day blessing cards are not available because we don't have any more. We ran out. But once we get them in, I think we're going to order a, a bunch more. Uh, once we get them in, we'll announce it because all of June, uh, we'll be praying for our fathers, living or deceased. So it doesn't matter, living or deceased. And then we're going to put it in here. So for now, you can use the, the pink slips of paper there and you can put them on here and then we'll pray for whoever, right? Whoever's on the, that, that pink sheet of paper and then especially with the, this month is dedicated to praying for fathers. And so, um, yeah, whether living or deceased, leave the names here. But once we get the cards, there's a card in the card you could send to your dad, right? I found out we ran out because I was like, oh, I, I need to get one for my dad so I can send one. I'm trying to be cheap, you know, instead of going to like Target and getting my Hallmark card. I was like, well, oh, support the parish and put, you know, $5 in and stuff. But we're all out. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to send my dad. Just send him Apple Cash or something. I don't know. And so um, hopefully we, we get that so that way you receive the cards you can send to your dad on Father's Day, which is soon, right? Father's Day is like, is it next Sunday? Yes. Oh my gosh, next Sunday. All right, so we get that. Let's see. This Friday, there'll be no confessions at 6 p.m. I'll, uh, I'll be with the eighth graders for their graduation mass, and then I'll be at the graduation too in, 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 in the name of our pastor, Father Ernesto. If you don't know, he's on vacation. My vacation ends, his begins. So like, let's pray for him and pray for me because I'm alone here. <laughs> and so um, there'll be no confessions on Friday, but there will still be the 7 p.m. Mass. I'm trying to get a priest to come and say Mass so I can spend all my time with the 8th graders. And because like them, I'm also leaving, right? So that's kind of like my going away too with them. <laughs> Just, I was with them with Disneyland a few days ago. That was fun. And then, so I'll be there for their graduation. I'm graduating too. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and so Friday, no confessions. But confessions are Tuesday normally. I will begin at 530. 
Okay, 5.30, I'll begin at 5.30, and then we'll, I'll go until I have to celebrate Mass in the evening, which is like 6.50, I'll stop. Thursday, I've committed myself to, to hear confessions in the morning until 9.30. Okay, so if you can come in the morning on Thursday, if you need to go to confession, after Mass until 9.30, I'll be hearing confessions while we have adoration here. Okay? Or by appointment, give me a call. And if, if I have an open slot on my schedule, hear your confession, okay? And so, anytime, right? Except Friday at 6 o'clock, okay? We just won't have that, that, that confession time there, okay? Let's see. If, if parents, if you're interested in getting your kids uh, registered for confirmation, First Communion, or RCIA for minors, or even if yourself need sacraments, the last orientation workshop to receive information to register is on Thursday, June 22nd at 7 p.m. Okay, June 22 at 7 p.m., okay? And also, parents, please don't let your kids play with the papers there. That, that takes us, it, 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 the envelopes cost money, and we're finding a whole bunch of them ripped up, crumpled up, and we can't use them. And so please don't let them play with the, the papers, and because our secretaries make these. They, they print it out, they cut it up, and they put them in there. So please don't let them play with that. Bring, bring your own toys for the kids if you have to. Okay, it's okay to bring toys as long as you take it with you, right? I don't want to find cars and stuff here, all right? So please don't let them play with that. Oh, okay, that's all the announcements. Anyone celebrating birthdays this week? Raise your hand. Yay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Good. Five, six. All right, let's bless these people celebrating birthdays. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life. Y'all know me. I like to bless first, so then we can clap for them. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life, especially these folks that are celebrating their birthdays. Bless them with more years of life. Bless them with more faith, hope, and love. And may mighty God bless all of you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> Any couples married in the Catholic Church celebrating your wedding anniversary, come on up. Come on down. Come on down. I like this blessing. All right, you brought the whole family with you. Good. Bring the family too. It's okay. I have plenty of holy water. Bridget, can you get the holy water, please? Uh, two roses. Hi, Betty. Names again, Patty and Bumaro, and the kids. Good. What? Ah, no worries. Uh, how many years married? 20. 20 years. Five kids. I was like, one, two, three, four, one more. Good, good. All right. Hi, guys. Your names? Nicholas and Celia. How many years together? 16. Married? All right, 16, 7. Good. Um, kids, five? Five. Oh, oh, grandkid. Hi. Okay, cool, cool. Good. And you two, come, come here in the middle. Don't be, don't be shy. Names? Genevieve. Genevieve and Beto. How many years married? 13. 14, 13. Okay. And two kids? Oh, hi, guys. Three. Oh, yeah. On the way. Yay. <laughs> good, good. All right. Hold hands. Look at each other's eyes. Let's bless these couples. You've got to look, look at each other. And then kids, you can put their, your hands on their shoulders if you want and all that stuff. Let's bless these couples. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the sacrament of holy matrimony. Set your spirit upon these couples as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. Help them remember the vows that they made on their wedding day to love each other, respect each other, and to care for each other in good times and in bad. And help them to grow in faith, hope, and love. And help them and bless also their children, their family, wherever they may be. So that together, united in the Eucharist, they may continue to do good things on this earth. And through the intercession of our Blessed Mother and her husband, our St. Joseph, may Mary God bless all of you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. One more. Good job. 
All right, so, but is, you can give that to your, your wife. Give that to your wife. And beso. Kiss. Presentation of a child? Anybody? Okay, Miss Gonzalez, announcement. Uh, parents, thank you so much for joining us today at our last school family mass of the year. Uh, we look forward to the end of the year, but please come and support our food sale. And just to let you know, our teachers will be on the sides here or in the food sale area. Grades one and two will go to Miss Guzman. Grades three and four will go to Miss Banuelos. And junior high will go to either Miss Jackson or Miss Alvarez. Thank you. Hope to see you there. Thank you, Miss Gonzalez. Um, we do have a commissioning of three new Eucharistic ministers. And so, Eliasar, where are your Eucharistic ministers? Let's get them blessed. I have a little. Two, just two? Okay, sounds good. Oh, this has already been. I remember that. Oh, you're in the front? It's like, Liz already blessed you. <laughs> I'm going to bless you and Matt. Your names? I'm sorry. Gustavo and Claudia. Okay, Gustavo and Claudia. Liz. <laughs> Liz. All right. Let's, let's bless this, these three. Well, two and then one more. May the Lord bless you so that, at, so that as you minister, as a Eucharistic minister, the body and blood of Christ to your brothers and sisters, you may um, share God's love, God's peace, God's forgiveness to those who you encounter. May Almighty God bless all of you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you guys. Congratulations. Does you already have one of these? Oh, well. I'm going to get that one. Thank you guys. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you guys. God bless. Let's <laughs> again. <laughs> All right. One last announcement before we go. So I can announce where I'm going. Right. And so this is my last, my last school mass with all of you. So my heart, my heart is full and it breaks at the same time. And so I can announce that as of July 1st, I will be going to Christ the King Parish in Hollywood, LA area. So right in the border of Hollywood, LA is Christ the King Parish. And I'll be beginning there July 1st. So my last day here is June 30 with all of you. So um, keep me in prayer. Pray for my new parish that I'm going to. There's only one Spanish mass there. And the rest are in English. So it's totally different than my, my experience here at St. Philip Mary. And there's a lot of Filipinos. So that means I get to work on my Tagalog, finally. Because I'm losing it. My mom gets mad at me. You're losing your Tagalog. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I can't practice it with anybody here. Ms. Gonzalez doesn't speak Tagalog. <laughs> And so, and so it, yeah, keep me in prayer. It's, I'm looking forward to this new change in life. Yesterday, I had lunch with our church priest, Father Sergio Sandoval. So I was just talking to him about ordination, our time as classmates, and the parish. And so we had a good lunch yesterday. And so he's going on vacation to Mexico to celebrate his first masses there in Mexico, in his, in his town. And so when he comes back, I think he's going to be back after 4th of July. And so he's going to take a little extra time. Father Ernesto approved him to take a little extra time to spend with family in, in, in Mexico. That he'll be back. He'll, he'll begin here July 6th, something like that. He's an awesome guy. He's, he's great. He was my classmate for a few years. And you, you guys will grow to love him like you guys grew to love me. And so, parents, I thank you for sending your kids to Catholic school. I never went to Catholic school my whole life. My first Catholic school was St. John's Seminary. And that doesn't count. That's a seminary, right? And so thank you for investing in your children. Thank you. Thank you for allowing, you know, Ms. Gonzalez, the teachers, the faculty, the staff, the priest, myself, Father Ernesto, to be part of their life, right? I love Catholic school because of what you have brought to us here. The school I'll be going to has less kids, so there are a lot more struggles there. It's, I'm going to be working with the principal and the staff there 
to hopefully bring in more kids in, in the school, right? Because Catholic school is so important. So thank you, thank you, parents, from the bottom of my heart for all your love, your support of your kids in school. And of course, students, you guys have been awesome. I've been love, love working with you. And so we'll get more teary-eyed, mushy speeches later. But I just want to say thank you to the parents for sending your kids to Catholic school. And hopefully you can continue to provide, to give them this opportunity to, to grow in faith in school at the same time, okay? So thank you all for all your many blessings, for all your prayers, for all your love. And I look forward to someday coming back to visit in, in the future, okay? And so thank you, everybody. And so I think that's it. That's it. I'm hungry, so let's go. Please stand. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a good day, everybody. You too, Father.